We're back with the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Congressman Ed Royce, uh, and there's a story that's breaking now, negotiations to try to save two captives held by ISIS. Mr. Chairman, you're familiar with what's going on. We don't know precisely what's going on, but the Jordanian government, the regime there, the, the monarchy in Jordan, now says they would be willing to give up this, this a woman who's a convicted terrorist, suicide bomber whose suicide vest didn't blow up, uh, in exchange for that captured Jordanian F-16 fighter pilot and presumably that, uh, that Japanese uh, journalist who's being held by ISIS. What are you hearing? What's going on? Well, we know that ISIS is also asking for some cash on the barrel head. And, and part of the problem, every time ISIS gets its hands on another $20 million, uh, that, that buys, you know, uh, thousands of these man pads or... Uh, other equipment that they're trying to uh, use in terms of offensive weapons. So it's long been the position of the United States and the UK not to deal with terrorists because it encourages the taking of additional hostages and it encourages, frankly, the transfer of wealth into the hands of terrorist organizations. This is the, this is the conundrum. But the U.S. did release five uh, Taliban prisoners from Guantanamo Bay in exchange for Sergeant Bo Bergdahl. This was done through negotiations uh, of, of the government of Qatar. Uh, and so there is that precedent where the U.S. did make a swap like and, that. An unfortunate precedent, because at the time I argued against that because it does violate the principle of not negotiating with terrorists. I think it was a mistake. Uh, and in, in retrospect, uh, now the Jordanians are pointing to that, saying, well, if you're willing to do it, uh, then why can't we negotiate with terrorists as well? It's a slippery slope. And the Israelis have made those kinds of lopsided swaps as well over the years to get their soldiers back from Hamas and Gaza. They've released hundreds of Palestinian uh, They've prisoners. gotten to the point where they'll release a thousand terrorists, some with blood on their hands, for one soldier. And I would just argue... I'm not sure this strategy is working in terms of negotiating with terrorists, except for the terrorists. So what, if you're the government of, uh, of Japan right now, mm -hmm. and you've sp spoken to Japanese officials, yes, if you're the government of Japan and there's pain there, they, they believe one of their Japanese hostages has already been beheaded yes, by ISIS. There's another one there. They'd like to get this person out. And, and the government of Jordan, they'd like to get their fighter pilot out of there as well. What do you do? Well, it's a tough Hobson's choice uh, for, for Jordan in particular here. They've got a brave pilot, but on the other hand, they have someone who killed, who was part of a team that killed 60 people and injured 115. And the bottom line is that if you give in and do the negotiation, it is basically sending the message that the next time you take a hostage, uh, you know, you can, you, you can gain ground with Western governments. Uh, I stand with the U.K. and our U.S. position. I do not think you should negotiate with terrorists, and I would hope that other countries around the world would be getting... Boko Haram, for example, is now in this line of work. Uh, the terrorist organizations in North Africa are taking hostages left and right in the hopes that the French or the Italians will pay them more. I, I, it's, as I say, it's a, it's a road to a cul-de-sac. You're actually having the terrorist organizations strengthened in their ability to get their hands on more hard currency. President Obama has promised to degrade and destroy, ultimately destroy ISIS. How's that going? Well, it's kind of mixed results. I mean, you can see that the recruitments into ISIS uh, still manage uh, to find their way uh, at such a pace that they're recruiting at a faster rate than uh, the casualties on the, on the battlefield. And certainly other al-Qaeda franchises such as Boko Haram, are also gaining traction at the same time. So uh, it's, it's, a, it's a close run battle here right now with these Al Qaeda affiliates. Ed Rice is the chairman of the House Foreign Affairs Committee. Mr. Chairman, thanks for coming in. Thank you, Wolf. Justin